touching them with your hands. But like the seafaring man on the ocean desert of waters, you choose them as your guides. And following them, you reach your destiny. For 78 summers, destiny has brought the stars in alignment. One summer's night, they shine brighter. They seem closer. Seeing them gather together forcefully opens the door of imagination, wonder, and awe. The very first time they gathered, fate made a hero. On the heels of leaving the game forever, once again, stand tall. More than 20 years later, Stan the Man led a courageous comeback charge. And there it goes, a home run over the right field screen. And sometimes stars collide. But when they're at their best, the stars are truly remarkable to watch. Tonight, it is that greatness. That belief. That when the finest take the field, anything, anything, anything can happen. That's why we watch each summer with wide eyes, knowing that our heroes are out there. And if we reach far enough, if we believe, we may just be able to touch our dreams and touch a star. Tonight, the world's greatest have gathered to take our part, our part, our part, our part in America's, 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 in America's grand game. This is more than a game, it is a celebration, and you are invited to the baseball family reunion. Can you hear them? They're welcoming you in this magnificent shrine to America's pastime, AT&T Park. Seven years young, but tradition as thick as the fog that rolls across the bay, eternally embraced by Willie McCovey Cove, a tempting target for an all-star splashdown, and for our broadcast partner and Diamondback star, Eric Burns, and his diggity dog, Bruin. How you doing, bro? Hi, Eric, Joe, and Tim. We'll talk to you in just a bit. We all want to hear what the dog has to say. And this, of course, the house that Barry built, his home team, his home park. Who are we kidding? This is his world right now, guys. Well, for the National League, we've got two of the top home runner hitters in Major League Baseball, Barry Bonds and his 751 career home runs. Just a handful away from breaking the all-time record in the outfield. And then Ken Griffey Jr. having an outstanding first half, 586 home runs, tied for six all-time with Frank Robinson. That's why it's exciting for me to start with the National League. Well, and right now in the American League, we get to see the best offensive player in the game in Alex Rodriguez. 30 home runs already for the New York Yankee third baseman. And then he's got his counterpart, Vladimir Guerrero, Big Daddy Vladdy. Won the home run derby the other day. I'll tell you what, there isn't a pitch that he doesn't like. Yeah, see ball, hit ball. It is the 78th Midsummer Classic from AT&T Park. We are so proud to bring it to you. Along with Kevin Kennedy, Eric Karros, I am Jeannie Zalasco. Let's get the rivalry back. You're leaning to the National right, League, you know, yes, I sir? I grew up a National League guy. There you go, go, guy. I'm going to pick the National League for the first time. They haven't won in nine tries. Exclude that tie in Milwaukee a few years Please ago. Please do. I'm picking the National League not because of Bonds and Griffey as much as a young infield that they have. New guys, second-year players, right and Reyes on the left side, Utley at second base, Prince Fielder knocking out Albert. Getting the leading vote in the National League at first, 29 home runs, and then Russ Martin, the exciting Dodger behind the plate. Well, Kevin likes the youth. I like the experience of the major, the American League. We already talked about A-Rod. We've got Jeter there. We've got Ortiz. Big postseason hits. That's who I like, the experience in the American League. All right. Well, as a final reward for their work last fall, Tony La Russa, Jimmy Leland will manage their collection of All-Stars tonight. And as a special treat for us, we had cameras in the clubhouse. These guys know what tonight is all about. There's going to be something real special happen with Willie Mays here before the game starts. It'll be something that everybody in this room will forever be fortunate that we were a part of it. The game is booming. It, it, it really is booming, fellas, and that's, uh, that's a credit to all of you. And no disrespect to anybody, it always booms in New York and Boston, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but it's booming in Minnesota, it's booming in Oakland, Believe it or not, it's booming in Detroit. They're coming out over, and that's because of you guys. You're putting on a good show. Well, what I took from that, this is the fans game, and La Russa and Leland, best friends in life, are letting their players know. They're going to play to win. They're going to play intense, whether it counts or not. No secret about that. But baseball is thriving right now. We've drawn more revenue, had more revenue, more fans in baseball the last two years than ever in the history of the game. And they're teaching the players to respect the game and respect the fans. Well, I like what Jim Leland said. Baseball, it exists outside of New York and Boston. You look at division leaders right now, San Diego, Milwaukee, Detroit, small market clubs. 
Baseball is booming all over the country. And you have to love the irony because the site of the All-Star Game announced years in advance. Who could have predicted that the 2007 game would arrive at the exact time? Barry Bonds is on the brink of history, whether you like it or whether you don't, guys. Well, you know what? Barry Bonds deserves to be here, Jeannie. You know, he's one of the best players ever to play the game. The numbers even dictate that. And he wasn't voted just by the San Francisco fans. He was voted nationally as well yeah, as internationally. internationally. Yeah. People want to see Barry. He was a three-time MVP in Pittsburgh before he ever came to San Francisco. Seven-time MVP. He's a Hall of Famer, first ballot for me. Well, the fans got it right, and the players also want to see him. A-Rod said, I can't wait to watch him hit. David Wright said, look, I'm going to tell my children and grandchildren that I suited up with Barry Bonds. You know, there's one common theme amongst all of us that are watching the game and the players. We're all fans. You know, he may not be the best ball player in the house tonight. Uh, you said that most of these players are fans first with a lot of respect for the history of the game. When we asked Derek Jeter and Ken Griffey Jr. to join our team at Fox, they jumped at the chance for a moment of greatness. Jeter, Jr., and the Say Hey Kid, an exclusive conversation. An artist's brush paints a vivid stroke. Through just his canvas and imagination, he can capture a moment. It's only when the artist and his subject truly connect do they call it a masterpiece. Mr. Mays. Thanks, first of all. First of all, no, yes. no Mr. Mays. <laughs> Willie. No, Willie. Yes. Thanks for joining us. This is it's an honor for me. It's an I know honor this for, me. for Ken. Mm -hmm. Now, we got some questions for you. Okay. Now, Ted Williams once said they created the All-Star Game for Willie Mays. Oh, uh, Ted said that? Ted Williams said that. 24 All-Star Games. What was your yes. favorite one? The one time we played the two All-Star Game, I got three for four in each game. Uh, Whitey Ford was there. I hit a couple of home runs off of him. Uh, a couple home runs. Yeah, yeah, well, you guys, uh, you got to grow up. When you get my age, he might be able to hit one. Uh, in 1954, the catch that everybody remembered, is that your best catch? No, that wasn't my best catch, but that was the best TV catch. But the best one that I think, this is just my opinion, bases loaded, line drive, I catch the ball, hit the fence, knock myself out, and I still had the ball. You see any one playing the game now that reminds you of how you played the game? Not as good, obviously. Mm. Julian was right there, you know, but I don't want to tell him in front yeah, of his face. I'll, I'll tell you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. On camera. I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I made was, my year. <laughs> With Barry about to break the home run record, how are you going to celebrate? It's always fun for me to see Barry play. Uh, I remember him when he was about five years old, you know, he'd be in my locker chewing gum and always uh, aggravating me and trying to see what he could learn about the game, you know. He's I'm still favorite. aggravating you. Still. He's aggravating me, and he still got that, he's still doing that, so I can't get away from that. So when you, when you say uh, what, it, what it's going to be like, it's going to be fun for me because now he's number one in home runs. And I think somebody's going to break that record sometime, but those are just numbers. What do you want the people to remember you by? Very good. The reason I'm pausing is because it's very difficult for me to try and pick a moment of what, that, what I want them to remember me by. I don't think it would be baseball. I think it would be the way I treated the game and the guys that I played with. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, you very guys. much. This is well, let me let me say this to you guys. Uh, I I thank you guys of uh, uh, such role models that when I see you on the field, I get chills. And I don't do that. I don't. I, nobody phase me on in a game of baseball. And I'm just proud of you. So I don't know how you feel about me, but it's you know I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm just telling you about what I do for you guys, you know, I enjoy you guys, you know, and hope you can continue on doing what you do and, and love what you do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, my pleasure. Okay. The numbers for Willie May speak for themselves. 51 rookie of the year thanks to Leo DeRocha giving him a chance after a tough start. Two-time MVP, 24 All-Star games, 12 gold gloves. 660 home runs in his career. But that's not what stood out for me. I was a youngster in LA, growing up as a Dodger fan, saw the Dodgers and Giants on TV. That's the only games we had. Willie Mays had a walk win game and scored from first base on a routine base hit to right field. Lefevre, the second baseman, got the cutoff. He was in short right field. He dropped his arm. Willie scored all the way.
He told me last year, I did that. He says, I knew as soon as Lefevre dropped his arm, I was going to score. That's what impressed me. Well, and for me, Willie Mays, the first real compete, complete player, power, speed, and defense. Why do I say that? The only player with 300 home runs, 300 stolen bases, and 10 gold gloves. And we'll have more of that conversation on Fox Saturday Baseball. We'll see you guys post-game. Right now, it's time for the Taco Bell swing. Four million, 30 seconds to hit three balls. Here's the rules, and here's the eight. In baseball, the love affair continues. And now let's meet the American League All-Star team. First, the coaches. From the Minnesota Twins, manager Ron Gardenhire. From the Texas Rangers, manager Ron Washington. From the Detroit Tigers, Lloyd McClendon. Raphael Belliard. Andy Van Slyke. Gene Lamont. Jeff Jones. And Chuck Hernandez. And now the American League Reserves. From the Baltimore Orioles, infielder Brian Roberts. From the Boston Red Sox, pitcher Josh Beckett. Outfielder Manny Ramirez. Infielder Mike Lowell. Pitcher Hideki Okajima. And pitcher Jonathan Papelbon. From the Chicago White Sox, pitcher Bobby Jenks. From the Cleveland Indians, outfielder Grady Sizemore. Catcher Victor Martinez. And pitcher CC Sabathia. From the Detroit Tigers, infielder Carlos Guillen. Pitcher Justin Verlander. From the Kansas City Royals, pitcher Gil Mesh. From the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, pitcher John Lackey. Pitcher Francisco Rodriguez. From the Minnesota Twins, infielder Justin Morneau. Outfielder Tory Hunter. And pitcher Johan Santana. From the New York Yankees, catcher Jorge Posada. From the Seattle Mariners, pitcher J.J. Putz. From the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, outfielder Carl Crawford. From the Texas Rangers, infielder Michael Young. From the Toronto Blue Jays, outfielder Alex Rios. And now the National League All-Star Reserves. Now let's meet your National League All-Star team. First the coaches from the Florida Marlins, Freddie Gonzalez. From the San Francisco Giants, Bruce Bochy. From the St. Louis Cardinals, Joe Patini. Pitching coach, Dave Duncan. Marty Mason. And Dave McKay. Out in the bullpen, Jeff Murphy. From the Arizona Diamondbacks, infielder Orlando Hudson. Pitcher Brandon Webb. Pitcher Jose Valverde. From the Atlanta Braves, catcher Brian McCann. 
from the Chicago Cubs, outfielder Alfonso Soriano. Infielder Derek Lee. From the Colorado Rockies, outfielder Matt Holliday. And pitcher Brian Fuentes. From the Florida Marlins, infielder Miguel Cabrera. From the Houston Astros, pitcher Roy Oswald. Outfielder Carlos Lee. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, pitcher Brad Penny. And pitcher Takashi Saito. From the Milwaukee Brewers, shortstop J.J. Hardy. Pitcher Ben Sheets. Pitcher Francisco Cordero. From the New York Mets, pitcher Billy Wagner. From the Philadelphia Phillies, outfielder Aaron Rowan. And pitcher Cole Hamels. From the Pittsburgh Pirates, infielder Freddie Sanchez. From the St. Louis Cardinals, infielder Albert Pujols. From the San Diego Padres, pitcher Chris Young. And pitcher Trevor Hoffman. From the Washington Nationals, infielder Dimitri Young. And now let's meet the American League manager and starting lineup. The manager from the 2006 American League champion Detroit Tigers, Jim Leland. <laughs> Batting first and playing center field from the Seattle Mariners, Ichiro Suzuki. Batting second and playing shortstop from the New York Yankees, Derek Jeter. Batting third and playing first base from the Boston Red Sox, David Ortiz. Batting fourth and playing third base from the New York Yankees, Alex Rodriguez. Batting fifth and playing right field from the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, Vladimir Guerrero. Batting sixth and playing left field from the Detroit Tigers, Maglio Ordonez. Batting seventh and playing catcher from the Detroit Tigers, Ivan Rodriguez. Batting eighth and playing second base from the Detroit Tigers, Placido Polanco. And warming up in the bullpen, batting ninth and pitching from the Oakland Athletics, Dan Heron. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2007 American League All-Stars. Now let's meet the National League manager and starting lineup. The manager from the 2006 World Series champion, St. Louis Cardinals, Tony La Russa.
leading off and playing shortstop from the New York Mets, Jose Reyes. Here you go, San Francisco, batting second and playing left field from the San Francisco Giants, Barry Bonds. center field from the New York Mets, Carlos Beltran. Batting fourth and playing right field from the Cincinnati Reds, Ken Griffey Jr. Batting fifth and playing third base from the New York Mets, David Wright. Batting sixth and playing first base from the Milwaukee Brewers, Prince Fielder. Batting seventh and catching from the Los Angeles Dodgers, Russell Martin. Batting eighth and playing second base from the Philadelphia Phillies, Chase Utley. Pitching and batting ninth from the San Diego Padres, Jake Peavy. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2007 National League All-Stars. A look at the All-Stars, and no surprise, the biggest ovation for Barry Bonds waving to the crowd. Back with more before the All-Star game after tonight is a multi-platinum selling artist whose albums have earned him two Grammy Award nominations. Please welcome, along with bandmate Kenny Dale Johnson, San Francisco's own Chris Isaac. See by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the fight that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner attention to the video scoreboard as we begin our tribute to one of Major League Baseball's all-time greats.
Ted Williams once said, the All-Star game was invented for Willie Mays. The Say Hey Kid played in a record 24 Midsummer Classics, and here tonight, among a constellation of the greatest stars in today's game, he shines again. Please welcome, from center field, the Say Hey Kid, number 24, Willie Mays. And now with a throw one more time from center field, here is Willie Mays. It was Jose Reyes who got to catch that ceremonial first pitch, and it's Jose Reyes who's going to take that souvenir home. And now a special ride for a special man, 76-year-old Willie Mays, in a pink Cadillac here at AT&T Park. most hits in the history of the All-Star game, most stolen bases, most runs scored, a career 307 hitter in Midsummer Classics, and a man who when he was an All-Star wanted to play a full nine innings. Nineteen sixty went six for eight, hit for the cycle in the All-Star game. His favorite all-star outfield he was a part of himself, Roberto Clemente and Hank Aaron. And just this morning was there for the dedication of the Willie Mays Boys and Girls Club of Hunters Point, right here in the shadow of AT&T Park. So charismatic, played with such joy. People just love to watch him play. The ultimate five-tool player. And for baseball fans, was really the first great African-American star where fans got to see his entire career. 
came up at the age of 20 in 1951. Jackie Robinson had predated him by four years in 1947, but fans saw Jackie for the first time with the Dodgers at the age of 28 because of segregation, because of the war. But baseball fans got to see the entire great career of a great man, one of, if not the greatest player ever. Willie Mays, the Say Hey Kid. More from AT&T Park in San Francisco on the other side of the break. We admired him from the other side of the field, Tim McCarver, that was, that was special. Oh, what a moving tribute to a guy who, who exhibited the, every facet of the game that was superb. And here it is, Willie Mays tonight. How appropriate is this that he's giving way to Barry Bonds, 751 home runs. He's batting second tonight. Tony La Russa says he'll hit twice in this game. Yeah, he's batting for La Russa in the National League lineup. And when you talk to Tony La Russa, the funny thing about it is he'll tell you, you forget the whole this time it counts and home field advantage in the World Series. He's almost a throwback saying as National Leaguers, and he is one now through and through, by the way, we should be embarrassed that we have not won in nine straight games. Yeah, because Tony La Russa, you may remember, started as the American League manager when he managed the Oakland Athletics back in the early 90s. Well, let's see, where is Eric Burns? He could have been on this field as an all-star. Instead, he's part of our broadcast team out in McCovey Cove in a kayak with a special friend. Eric, how you doing out there? Oh, Joe, this is great out here. I'm with my Bulldog Brew, and I'll tell you what, I grew up in San Francisco. I grew up going to all the games out there in Candlestick Park, sitting in section 62 in center field. And if I can't be playing in this game right here, I did bring my glove along just in case, but if I can't be playing in it, sitting out here with fellow San Franciscans and my Bulldog Brewing in McCovey Cove is the greatest thing going on. Well, we're glad to have you with us. And if a ball sails out that way, you're gonna have to muscle up and fight for that souvenir. Good luck. I appreciate it. You don't want to get in a fight with me out here, though, guys. I'm pretty intense tonight. We look back at the history of baseball in the Bay Area, and we look back at the San Francisco Seals of the old Pacific Coast League. And who played on that team? The great Joe D. Joe DiMaggio. Or you could look at the New York Giants moving to San Francisco in 1958, home to some of the greatest names in the history of the game. Willie Mays. Willie McCovey in that high leg kick and delivery of Juan Marichal. How about All-Star Game history? Roberto Clemente's game-winning hit, 1961. Or 1984, Fernando with a strikeout, Doc Gooden with a strikeout, a win for the National League. But now it's 2007, and it's your All-Star Game from San Francisco, next on Fox. Find a prettier setting for baseball, and the worse your seat is, the better your view is here in this park. And once again, tonight's starting lineups, they're brought to you by Taco Bell, Think Outside the Bun, and they're brought to you by a couple of shortstops. First, a guy who later this month is headed into Cooperstown, and he'll be followed up reading the National League lineup by a guy who's already there. Hello, I'm Cal Ripken. Uh, I had a chance to play in 19 All-Star games. And I was even voted All-Star MVP two of those times. It's my honor to give you the American League lineup, uh, the starting lineup. Hitting first, playing center field, Ichiro Suzuki. Hitting second from the New York Yankees, a shortstop, Derek Jeter. Hitting third, Big Poppy, David Ortiz. Hitting fourth, he still seems to amaze me, is Alex Rodriguez. Hitting fifth, Vladimir Guerrero, the, this year's home run derby champion. Boy, can he hit the ball a long way. Hitting sixth, Maglio Ordonez from the Detroit Tigers. Hitting seventh, Pudge, Rod Pudge Rodriguez, uh, a guy that just controls the whole game with his arm alone. And hitting eighth, Placido Polanco. Hitting ninth, and starting uh, for the, from the Oakland A's, Dan Heron. Thanks, Cal. Great job. Now here's the National League lineup. Leading off, playing shortstop, Jose Reyes. Batting second, playing left field, Barry Bonds. Batting third, playing center field, Carlos Beltran. Batting fourth, from the Cincinnati Reds, Ken Griffey Jr. Batting fifth, playing third base, David Wright. Batting sixth, playing first base, Prince Fielder. Batting seventh, and catching, from the Los Angeles Dodgers, Russell Martin. Batting eighth, playing second base, Chase Utley, from the Philadelphia Phillies, and pitching for the National League, Jake Peavy. Osborne Earl Smith, thank you, sir. Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. 
So we get ready for the 78th All-Star Game here in San Francisco. And it is Jake Peavy first out there for the National League, according to Tony La Russa, who worked just one inning in this game. The American League has won nine straight decisions. So it starts with Peavy, and we'll see a lot of good young arms for each side. But it's up to Peavy to try and start it the right way for the National League here tonight. First time these San Diego Padres have had a starter in the All-Star game since Lamar Hoyt did it back in 1985. Well, one thing has happened here that is good for fans who want to see a lot of runs in an All-Star game. At least there's a chance we could see some scoring because of the overcast skies here in San Francisco. If you watched the home run derby last night, you saw the sun, the shadows, hitters having a tough time picking up the ball. That's not the case here today. Ichiro leads it off and takes a ball up and away. Called a ball by Bruce Fremming, 67-year-old home plate umpire who is hanging it up. This year, number two on the all-time list of games umpired behind Bill Clem. Ichiro with a base hit through the right side. And so the guy who, since he was a rookie in 2001, and who has the most hits in Major League Baseball since that time, does what he always does, singles through the right side, and that's the way this game begins. Seventh year in the Major Leagues in this country, and the seventh time on the All-Star team. Here's Derek Jeter. Brad Penny's already loosening up. This is an all-star game, isn't it? Guy gives up a hit. <laughs> Jake Peavy having a fantastic year. Nine and three, second best ERA in the National League. And gives up a hit. Peavy's getting loose. There's a strike to Derek Jeter. Jeter is now 33 years old. A three-time Gold Glove Award winner. 96 AL Rookie of the Year. And a career 318 hitter, which is fifth best in the history of the Yankees. If you think these stars that are in the game don't care to watch, you look at that National League side and everybody's on the top step of the dugout getting their best view. Speaking of those ca who care to watch, Jake Peavy from Sims, Alabama, a town of 1,200 people, and 17 of them are here to watch tonight. A one pitch to Cheater. Nothing in two. To me, Peavy is the nastiest starter that the National League could have thrown out there tonight. Yeah, he's similar to Brandon Webb, who has a similar sinker. Brandon, of course, the right-handed starter, can be overpowering for the Arizona Diamondbacks. He has Jeter set up at 0-2 and runs one in under his hands for ball one. Jake Peavy, a guy who just gets better and better. Last year had some tendonitis in his pitching arm, and so he had a rough first half. That's really been the only blip on the radar screen in his very exciting career with San Diego. Good breaking ball, and a check swing by Jeter. It's 2-2. Two and two. You can see Russell Martin setting up outside. The pitch was low, and Jeter did not go around. Jake Peavy, one of the rare pitchers that combines a sinker, a ball that hitters normally put in play. Again, he's a strikeout pitcher. He leads the National League in the National League in strikeouts, and you rarely see that combination: a sinker baller and a strikeout pitcher. 2004, he led baseball in ERA. 2005, led the National League in strikeouts. He's two and two on Jeter and Derek. He's very good at standing up there with two strikes and spoiling pitches, living to see another delivery. David Ortiz will follow, and then Alex Rodriguez, who's giggling in the dugout as Derek Jeter sent one over toward his teammates. A lot of guys would giggle like that to have the first half he has. 30 home runs, 86 RBIs. Might be. Could be. It is. 6-4-3 and a double play to start this night behind Jake Peavy. A base hit and this double play. So that's another reason Jake Peavy once again is such a terrific pitcher. He's a strikeout pitcher who can get the double play ball and two outs as Jeter grounds into a double play after the Suzuki single. And now a guy digging in, Tim, who I know is one of your favorites. Oh, yeah. He is about as clutch as any hitter in the game and in his time with the Red Sox has come up with more big hits than anybody in baseball. No 
no question about it. Two out, nobody on, a shift on on the infield and outfield, and a ball up and away. He is still struggling with a sore right quad. It's something that's been bothering him all year, and as he describes it, he sits down, he sits on those quads to hit and generate power, and it's one reason why his power is down. The other reason why is Manny Ramirez is not having his typical season hitting behind him. But he was voted in as the starting first baseman, typically the DH. The guy who plays first for the Red Sox, Euclid, could very well be here for the kind of season he's had. Absolutely tied up as Ortiz one and two. After two fastballs away, the slider inside, Ortiz didn't want to go, but did. But showing the effects of that sore quad. A lot of people say, well, it's the lower part of the body. How can it affect his swing? It does. One two pitch. High and tight from Peavy, who thought he was finished with his night's work. But old Brucey behind home plate, who will retire back to life in Wisconsin. And his wife Rose of 47 years said, no, it's ball two, two and two. Base is empty, two down here in the top of the first. And he says that's ball three, full count. 95 miles per hour from Peavy. Our Fox tracks outside of the zone, and now a full count pitch. Broken bat, Utley to his left, and that is an error by Prince Fielder. And a little embarrassing moment for the first-time All-Star. He was a little late getting to the bag, and by the time he turned around to throw a little low, and he just flat-out dropped it. Yeah, well, Ortiz is not a fast runner, particularly with the slow quad, and he just drops this ball. Ball right about at his right knee, but that ball's normally sucked up, but an error on Prince Fielder. And it keeps this first inning alive for Alex Rodriguez. That's about as routine a play as you can find. He hit it right into the shift. Right. But Ortiz is thinking, well, let's see. I'm usually the DH. I'm not going to say anything to Fielder. I might do the same thing later. There are the numbers. Just a phenomenal start on a team that hits the break double digits behind the Red Sox in the AL East. But it's not because of the season Alex Rodriguez has had. Ball one. Rodriguez with the most home runs for the Yankees at the break since Roger Maris at 33 in 1961 on his way to the record setting 61 home run season. 1 0 pitch. Left side, diving stop by right. Good play to end the inning. Fielder let down PV. David Wright did not. Bonds do up second in the bottom of the inning. In San Francisco, no score. Up and away, ball one. Danny Heron, the pitcher traded to the A's, the primary piece going from St. Louis to Oakland for Mark Mulder. And Reyes is going to start this game for the National League with a base hit up the middle. And what does that give Barry Bonds? A chance with a man on. Four home runs away from tying Hank Aaron. Five away from a new record. 751 home runs. Ball one. The fans voted him in, Tim, and primarily out here in the Bay Area, but fans on the internet, fans in other cities. The people want to see him play. No question about it. He's in this game. He should be in this game playing in San Francisco. Reyes goes, throw down, Reyes. Steal second. Larusa telling us before the game that he has given Jose Reyes the green light and he's running with Bonds up. And even though he made it, I am surprised. I, I know what you're inferring that how can you run with that big hole on the right side? But Jose Reyes, the individual skills certainly for all of these players evident in this ball game. 
46 steals for Reyes already this season leads baseball and Bonds is out in front of that good Dan Heron splitter and now Barry's in the hole one and two. There's obviously the big cloud of suspicion around Barry Bonds. There always will be because of the Balco case and the leaked grand jury testimony. But love him here in the Bay Area. Boo him in another city. Fans want to see him at the plate, and there's no pitcher in baseball that wants to see him at the plate. No. Out in front, he pops it up. Right side, and that's Polanco all the way out, called off by Guerrero, who gets to show off his arm. One out. Now the right guy fielded the ball. That's often a problem between second baseman and right fielders or shortstops and left fielders in the all-star game. Guerrero not only with the better arm, but he's coming forward. And Reyes elects to stay at second. So now with the switch hitting Beltron at the plate, Guerrero tucks himself back deep into right field again, and Beltron will try to drive home his teammate, Jose Reyes. Runner at second, Reyes, a single, a stolen base. Bonds flied out. And Beltron, who really has not had a very good season. He had a terrific start. But he had 234 in May, 238 in June, and he's hitting 192 in July. After a year in which he had 41 home runs last year. The 1 0 pitch. One ball, one strike. National League trying to jump out in front and get something done against Dan Heron, who, according to Jim Leland, his manager for tonight, is scheduled to pitch two innings. Strike two. One ball, two strikes, runner at second, one out. And that's ripped down the right field line, but hooked foul. If you go back to Saturday and the catch that Carlos Beltran made against his former team, the Houston Astros, realize it was Jose Cruz who taught him how to run up this hill, Tal's Hill in center. Lift your knees, run a little different, and make the grab. And that's about as good as it gets on an odd hill out of any center play, field. Uh, yeah, because you've got to be under control. Uh, Carlos Beltran made a lot of catches like that in for Houston and against Houston. It was robbing Luke Scott on Saturday, and it's Beltron, part of the match that they're coming off a road trip where they started great against Philadelphia. They stumbled at the end of the trip, including losing the series in Houston, and their lead is now only two games over the Atlanta Braves in the NL East. Philly's four and a half back in third place, and the Florida Marlins only seven back. A lot of people uh, thinking that the Mets would pull away in that division. Not so, so far. So Ben Sheets getting loose. Penny has already warmed up a bit, but now it's Sheets. Beltron strikes out, two away. A fastball from Heron gets Beltron. So now it's Ken Griffey Jr. In his eighth season with Cincinnati, 37-year-old outfielder. Came up as a 19-year-old with Seattle, that big smile on his face, his hat backward, playing with his dad. And I think the biggest number for Griffey is not the home run so far this season, but the number 82. That's how many games he's played for the Reds. It has been one freak accident and injury after another, frustrating Ken and frustrating the Reds and their fans since he came to Cincinnati. Even this year, of course, it, it happened during the offseason when he broke his arm in December playing with one of his children. 1 0 pitch, runner in second, two out, one ball, one strike. Where does Ken Griffey Jr. rank on the all time home run list? He is tied with Frank Robinson for sixth all time. And he's hit the second most home runs since the first of May in baseball. Prince Fielder, his teammate who's batting sixth, 
here tonight. Has the most. Two balls and a strike from Dan Heron. 19th season in the big leagues. 13th All-Star game and his third since coming to the Reds. 10 All-Star game hits. In his career in the count evens two and two. Griffey up the middle. That is a base hit, and the National League will take the lead. Ken Griffey Jr. delivers as Reyes scores one to nothing NL. We saw Heron splitters to Barry Bonds and Carlos Beltran. This one hangs up in the strike zone, right about bell tie. And the diving Jeter can't get to it, and the National League on top here in the first inning. And Heron and the rest of baseball seeing what Reyes does for the Mets day after day after day. He gets on, he steals a base, he scores runs, he makes things happen. And now his teammate, David Wright, bats with two out. David Wright, his second All-Star game, his first All-Star game last year, his first time up, he popped one in Pittsburgh. Got a home run, his first All-Star at bat. Breaks one foul down toward Ben Sheets in the National League bullpen. One ball, one strike. 24-year-old third baseman and a star in New York. He's covering third base, and the man to his left is Reyes at short. A good combination for the Mets. Two and one from Heron. Rather long first inning for Dan Heron, who had won 10 consecutive games before losing his last time out on Friday. Trailing here in the first inning, and the 2-1 to David Wright should end it. Jeter to Polanco. We go to the second inning in San Francisco. The National League is on top. Hit by Reyes, stolen base, and a run scored. Who's coming up? Vlad, Mags, Pudge, 1-0 NL. The right side and Guerrero in the hole on two. Let's go back to the home run. PNC Park in Pittsburgh. And that shot to right by Guerrero. Side and Guerrero in the hole on two. Let's go back to the home run. PNC Park in Pittsburgh. And that shot to right by Guerrero. The hole on two. Let's go back to the home run. PNC Park in Pittsburgh. And that shot to right by Guerrero, a game that was won, by the way, by the American League on a two-out, two-run triple by Michael Young in the ninth inning. A shattered bat on a pitch down and in, and David Wright takes care of Guerrero. That gives you an idea of that swing. He actually moved his feet back when he, when he swung. Look at the feet right there. The, the back leg moves back. The bat shatters. We've kidded uh, a lot, and everybody in baseball knows it's from his nose to his toes. <laughs> it is. It really is amazing, though, that he yes. has the ability of squaring up pitches that it looks like he can't even reach. And you're exactly right. I mean, for a guy who swings at that many bad balls and still has hit 300 10 years in a row. Now it's Maglio Ordonez, who is having a huge year for a team that a lot of people are starting to believe may be the best in baseball. The Detroit Tigers, they have some issues in their bullpen as you look at Cole Hamels getting loose and Sheets is right there with him. But if you ask Jim Leland, he'll tell you if we get our bullpen figured out, we're going to be tough to beat. Two up, two down here against Brad Penny in the second.
And so Ordonez, who is playing healthy, had an aggressive rehabilitation and procedure done to his knee after suffering that injury at the end of his time with the White Sox. The Tigers were the only team they were interested in paying him money in a big contract, and they have been rewarded by Ordonez, and he's just been getting better and better. So now two out, nobody on, and Yvonne Rodriguez steps in. Ball one down and in. There's Beckett. He's the next starter who's going to be a reliever in this game. He is scheduled to pitch two innings for the AL, according to Leland. Rodriguez grounds to short with a backhand and a great arm. Jose Reyes shows that rocket he's got hanging on the right side of his body. We go to the bottom of the second in San Francisco, one to nothing, you know. From the Brewers since Paul Molitor back in 1988. And if you ask his teammates on a very, very good young Brewers team, they'll tell you he is the leader of that club. Also the leader in the National League in home runs with 29. That's how you become the leader of a club, leading home runs. It's easy to kind of say stuff and have people listen to you yeah. if you're the utility guy or <laughs> some guy gets three at-bats every two weeks. Yeah, you, you see some guys are good in the clubhouse if they're utility guys, but not leaders. Two balls and a strike. Three balls and a strike from Dan Heron. Prince Fielder, who is playing in the shadow of his father, Cecil Fielder. And you start to compare their career. Cecil, the big right-handed slugging first baseman for Detroit. That's ball four up and away. And here is more on the kid, Prince Fielder of the Brewers. Hi, I'm Prince Fielder. I play first base for the Milwaukee Brewers. It's true, uh, when I was 12, I hit a ball in the upper deck in Tiger Stadium. Kind of cool. I kind of surprised myself. They played uh, Prince songs every time I came to hit. Some people call me Princess, but I think that's kind of, you know, unoriginal. <laughs> I'm into tattoos a lot. Most of them hurt, but not too much. One's my son's name. All right, I hit it inside the park home run. It felt like my legs were going to explode. Teammates enjoyed it as well. It was still a lot of fun. <laughs> And that is it. I mean, here's a guy with an inside the park home run. I don't care where you hit it or what ballpark. You have to be able to run a little bit to That's get around right. the base. That's exactly right. So you see the size, and it was his size as a young kid that scared some big league franchises away from him. Realize that he is a terrific athlete. And I think a more complete hitter than his dad, Cecil, who was more power, power, power. 0-2 oh, is the count on Russell Martin. The young catcher for the Dodgers and the starter here for the National League. Good scoop by Rodriguez. Dad's help in different ways. We talked about Prince Fielder and his father, Cecil. Russell Martin's father was a busker. I have never heard that word before reading Michael Farber's column in Sports Illustrated, actually a, a, a feature on Russell Martin, B-U-S-K-E-R. It's a person who plays music on the streets for money. And that's exactly what Russell's dad did, a huge jazz enthusiast. And he would come home, leave in the morning in Montreal, go down on the street, play, play music for money, and then come home and play with his son, teach him the game of baseball, and go back in the evening. So dad's help in different ways. And for Russell, who was brought into the Dodger organization as a third baseman. He brings a lot of tools. He is the top running catcher. He leads all other catchers in stolen bases as he lines out to third. And the big end of the bat ends up behind Alex Rodriguez on this line drive out number one. So Vlad Guerrero break a bat. Now it's Russell Martin's turn. Easy play for Rodriguez. You know, these guys come and go in these games. As you look at the play by Rodriguez. And for Martin, I started to get into it. Russell is a guy who's number one in the National League among catchers in average, RBIs, hits, runs, and stolen bases. He has 16. 16 so. stolen bases at the All-Star break for a catcher. Got to love it. So says Tim McCarver. What was your high? 
13. Chase Utley at the plate. Here is a guy who represents a real change in the game. Second base has become more of a power position. I think of Jeff Kent, who played here in San Francisco and now plays for the Dodgers, but my gosh, Utley last year had 32 home runs, most ever by a Philly second baseman, and he's, he's a good defensive player, not great, but he is a big-time run producer. And that really has changed him for catchers as well. A, a lot of the all-field no-hit catchers are starting to disappear. Utley was fooled on that pitch down and in. Ichiro to his left, calls it in, two out. And Prince Fielder back to first with a pinch hitter Cabrera coming up. So Miguel Cabrera is the pinch hitter. We knew coming in that this is the only way Cabrera would appear in this game. He jammed his left shoulder this past week playing for the Marlins, and he is here to hit, and he bats with one on two out here in the second. for four in all-star games past as he's playing in his fourth and he's done nothing Tim but hit since he showed up at the big league level with the Marlins last year of his contract with Florida and he will be commanding big money next year that is on the inside corner one and one Cabrera and Pujols, the only two players to have 25 or more home runs, 100 or more runs scored, 110 or more RBIs in each of the last three years. Out in front of it, strike two. Junior has the only RBI so far. And two out, base it up the middle to score Reyes in the first. Normally, all-star games are low-scoring affairs. They combined hitting for both the American and National League only 247 since the game began in 1933. Cabrera fouls it out of play off to the right. So normally, pitching dominates all-star games. <laughs> 77 all-star games, 248 average in the American League. 247 in the National League, and the run's exactly the same. Actually, if you want to update that graphic, the National League has 327 to the American League's 326. You know, you talk to La Russa, and he says, I honestly believe we have a team that can win this game. I look at the talent stacked up on each side, pitching and lineup and reserves for the AL. It seems to me to be tilted toward the American League as they've won nine straight All-Star games. But the NL leads at one nothing after two. Back after this from your local Fox station. Sheets is an All-Star for the third time. A gold medal winner in the Olympics in 2000. And he delivers to Polanco, who grounds to short. Reyes guides it over. Two pitches, one up, one down here in the third inning. And so Sheets takes care of the leadoff man, and a pinch hitter, Manny Ramirez, will come off the bench and try and kickstart this AL offense. That will probably be the only at bat of this game for Placido Polanco, nursing that uh, tender lower back. Jim Leland telling us that if he played for someone else, he probably wouldn't start him. That's how bad his back is. But since he plays for Detroit, he is the starting second baseman. So here is Manny, who is having a down season by his standards, 35-year-old outfielder. A Hall of Fame-type career that he is putting together. And one of only two players with 100 or more RBIs in each of the last nine seasons. The other is A-Rod. Underneath that one, into right, long run for Griffey. He's there and has it, two down. Let's get out of Ken Rosenthal who's with us with a special guest. Joe, we're with Dan Heron. Dan, you pitched for the A's right across the bay. How exciting was it for you to start this game? Man, it was very special, you know. Uh, had a lot of adrenaline going into it. Uh, you know, couldn't barely keep down a meal today. Uh, just been thinking about it all day, but it was awesome. Uh, uh, the fans were great. Uh, you know, it's a packed house. It was just an unbelievable experience. 
Dan, thanks very much. Joe, back to you. All right, Kenny, thank you. And, uh, you know, Dan Heron is one representative, Tim, of a long list of good young pitchers that we have in this game today. And they're going to be on display all night here. And I think it really speaks well for Major League Baseball that a lot of these young guys, this is not an all-star game dominated by the older set on the mound. As an example, 18 of the 24 pitchers involved on the on both rosters are under 30 years old. 75% of the pitchers on the All-Star game, at the All-Star game, under 30 years old. There's Bobby Jenks, the closer for the White Sox, as Ichiro, who has a base hit, is up on the count two and one. So Ichiro, who is about to head off as a free agent, whether he is retained by the Seattle Mariners or not. He's going to get a big contract after what he's done in his time with Seattle. Our Burger King hot zone for Ichiro as he just plops one out into left for a base hit. How pretty was that? I mean, he can hit it anywhere. It looked like he hit that ball with a violin. <laughs> There aren't too many balls that are hit like this. You can see that hot zone, our Burger King hot zone, and believe me, this guy, you can't pitch him anywhere and feel comfortable. A cue shot off the end of the bat, you don't see that three times in a season. That type of hit, but he is a magician with the bat. You look at the free agents that are out there for center fielders. We talked about this the other day on a Saturday in San Diego. You've got Ichiro, who we talked about, Torrey Hunter, Andrew Jones, Mike Cameron. There, there are four guys who are going to be out there, potentially, who are going to really get big deals, and Ichiro might lead the way. He's down to second on a base hit up the middle by Jeter. Kenny Rosenthal, do you have more on Ichiro's situation with Seattle? Joe, Ichiro is not going to be a free agent. He is close to signing a five-year deal with the Mariners in the range of 90 to 100 million. The obvious question will be whether he helped force out Mike Hargrove, who resigned as manager only a week ago Sunday. However, there are indications that these talks have been going on for quite some time. Okay, I'll say this about Mike Hargrove. I, I think the proof that he had lost his passion for managing and he hung it up in the first half of this season as Ortiz chops it foul is here are the Mariners who are right in the race in the American League West they're only two and a half out behind the Angels they're in an eight game winning streak they've got a dominating tremendous closer and puts they have so many weapons and yet Hargrove said he had had enough so he walks away yeah if if you say you've had enough under those circumstances then you've had enough I mean, the day he retired, his team won their eighth in a row. That was last Sunday. Actually, 10 days ago. Now Lou Pinella's buddy, John McLaren, is uh -huh. the manager in Seattle. And uh, a guy who is definitely worthy of that spot. And he is now in charge of a team that we showed you is only two and a half out in the AL West. Meanwhile, the AL is putting together a rally here with two out singles by Ichiro and Jeter, and it's up to David Ortiz to deliver. And that's a line drive into right, right at Griffey. Inning is over. Ortiz hit it hard, but right at Junior. Barry Bonds coming up in the bottom of the third. Going there. National League on top, one to nothing. one at bat he is finished and the new pitcher for the American League is Josh Beckett who is tied with Sabathia with his 12 wins has had a fantastic first half and the man who told Beckett he would go second in this all-star game is Jim Leland his manager for the day as Reyes fouls it back and out of play uh, Jim uh, you go to Beckett now and you told us your rotation before tonight's game I mean obviously you're going to be stacked anytime with with an all-star pitching staff but Tim and I were just talking about how many good young pitchers there are in this game today and you, you can run quite a handful out there you got a good staff down there no there's no question about it. And they're young Joe you know, I think I think that's a tribute to the college programs now they're just you know and, and even the high school club Josh is a Texas kid high school pitcher was taken actually that's a fair ball as it has spin on it and it goes for a double it gets past Alex Rodriguez, Beckett over to cover third, and we've seen 
Vlad do that. We've seen Ichiro do that. Now we see Reyes, who squirts one down the third base line. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was kind of a freak one there, obviously. So uh, hopefully we can get out of this. I don't know if he'll run with Bonds or, you know, at second base. I don't know if he'll steal third base with a left-hand hitter up there. I'm a little worried, though, because Alex is playing over a little bit. And he might be able to get it. So we got to watch out for it. This guy's a real exciting player. Hey, let's talk about a couple things here as Bond stands in, Jim Leland. First of all, we keep hearing this time it counts. In this situation, in Bond's heyday, and maybe even here in 2007, how anxious would you be to pitch to Barry Bonds, or would you just put him on? Well, I'd, I'd pitch to him in this situation, I think, at this point in the game. But, uh, you know, later on in the game, even in an All-Star game, you might do something. But I, I'd pitch to him during the regular season at this point. Jim, you had a very special relationship with Barry Bonds when you managed him at Pittsburgh. Oh, there's no question about that. We, you know, I, I managed him his first six years, obviously, and uh, we're very close and uh, have a great relationship. And I have the utmost respect for him. Bonds waits for a 1-0 from Beckett. He was in trouble after that cue shot foul ball or rather base it down the left field line that foul ball off the bat of Bonds evens the count at one ball one strike. What are your feelings on Barry Bonds as he is four home runs away from tying the great Hank Aaron for the all time home run record Jimmy. Well I think it's great you know I'm into it I'm excited about it and uh, you know you know it's going to happen it's just a matter of when and I'll, I'll obviously be one of the guys that's very happy for Barry. One ball, one strike from Beckett. In the air to left. Ordonez on the track, one out. Fly ball off the bat of Bonds is going to get that reaction here in San Francisco. Anything in the air. But he comes up short. And a nice ovation for Barry as he heads back to the dugout. That guy that just caught the ball in left field for you, Jim Leland, is Maglio Ordonez. What a first half he's putting together. Oh, uh, He's been tremendous all year long. I think the big thing is he's taking base hits to the opposite field, things of that nature. So he's using the whole ballpark. And, uh, you know, he, he, I think that's one of the things that's made him a better hitter this year without question. He hasn't hit with as much power, really, as maybe you would think, you know, uh, for the RBIs that he has. But he's, he's taken singles to the opposite field, doubles the opposite way, and I think that's made him a better hitter. Jim, isn't that normally the case? You rarely hear of a guy in a slump going the other way consistently. Well, I think, uh, you know, a lot of the good R RBI guys that I've watched over the years and managed against and be even before my time, I, I, a lot of them, none of them that I know of were afraid to take a base hit to the opposite field with a man on second, two outs. You're a talented man, Jim. You're talking to us, and yet your big left-hander, C.C. Sabathia, is getting loose. How'd you make that determination <laughs> while you're on a headset on national TV? Well, we did, you know, we, we set things up ahead of time, and we know, you know, basically what we want to do, and you know, we'll use a relief maybe to get out of an inning and then start to see uh, Sabathia the inning. Broken back ground ball to the right side, and Beckett is one out away from getting around that leadoff weird double off the bat of Jose Reyes as Ken Griffey Jr. steps to the plate. So you've got these starters lined up and then you get into your bullpen and you've got your pick if you're in a save situation with four very good arms, a good setup man in Okajima. Who would be your big guy at the back end of the ball game if you have a ninth inning lead? I think I'm going to go with Putz tonight. I think that uh, he's, he's going to be my choice. If, if we have a one run lead in the ninth inning, I'm going to put him out there. I, I think he's fantastic. I think he's without question one of the best in all of baseball. I've been very impressed with him. He, he's really good. You're just trying to play nice because you guys have the Mariners coming up at the start of the second half. You're no, trying to I, kiss up a little bit. No, I would, I'd like to use him <laughs> about six innings, to be honest. <laughs> at third two out Ken Griffey Jr. at the plate as the game's only RBI and that's fouled at the plate Jimmy uh, we thank you for your time not only uh, here tonight in San Francisco but uh, in on air thank you for all of your help last year during the postseason and in particular during the World Series well thanks for having me on guys it's always a pleasure believe me all right Jim Leland the manager of the American League and he is watching as Beckett tries to get around that double by Reyes Griffey with a bouncer up the middle for a two out RBI hit his first time up. And that's over but low one ball one strike. 96 from Beckett. Beckett has been bothered by a situation on his pitching hand with an avulsion to his middle finger on his right hand which is more or less a blister or weak skin eczema. 
uses something called Stan's Rodeo ointment to try and toughen up the skin on that finger because as silly as it may seem, if that skin breaks down, that is trouble for anybody trying to break off a good curveball or bring a ball to the plate as he ties up Griffey on a nasty pitch. Old Stan's made a lot of money off that ointment. The old Stan's Rodeo ointment set up Beckett for that nasty pitch down and in. Two bats for Bonds and a one to nothing National League lead after three. Walking on the beach last night, over the Rodriguez is first up for the American League. He is 0 for 1. Bounced into a force out his first time up. Soriano, <laughs> Alfonso, you're in the outfield with a glove on, but he's practicing his swing as Cole Hamels takes over and fools A-Rod with that very good changeup. Only outfielders could do that. You never see infielders because they expect balls to be hit right at them and certainly not catchers. 23-year-old Cole Hamels, who has had a sensational first half for the Phillies, who are right in the race in the NL East. Within shouting distance of the New York Mets at four and a half games out, and Hamels and his 10 wins, a big reason why. Just 23 years old. Great stuff. Strike two on the inside corner. Alex Rodriguez with his 30 home runs, 86 RBIs, and in his All-Star Game career, six out of 22 now with a home run. Left side base hit. And Rodriguez is on to start this fourth inning. Pepsi, the official soft drink of MLB, would like to congratulate Alex Rodriguez, the Pepsi clutch performer for the first half of the season. How about April 7th against the Orioles, a walk-off grand slam? Early, early, a lot of April magic. The 19th, the walk-off against the Indians. And then one at Fenway for good measure on June 3rd, ninth inning. Solo shot and a win for the Yankees. Learn more about the Pepsi Clutch Performer Award and sweepstakes as the runner goes. A-Rod's doing it all. Log on to PepsiClutch.com. Rodriguez has stolen nine bases during the regular season, and he has one here in the All-Star game. Tell you, makes the uh, makes the team feel better with that stolen base. The New York Yankees watching intently. They pulled a hamstring on the left leg and there's no ha hamstring problem with that stolen base. In the week leading to the All-Star game, he had a collision with Justin Morneau of the Twins and he pulled his left hamstring. There was some question as to whether he'd play in this game. And there's Rodriguez compared to Yankee greats and where they have been with their most home runs of the All-Star break. So he is healthy on a cool night stealing a base. Here's Guerrero, and there's a ground ball to short. Reyes over the first, one away. Maglio Ordonez will be the hitter. Let's go down to Jose Moda. Jose. Thanks a lot, Joe. Well, Barry, talk about the environment and being surrounded by this in your home ballpark and also Willie Mays and the reception here today. Oh, it was fabulous. This is great, man. This is a dream come true for me. You know, it's a, like I said, it's another chapter to my career. It's great to be able to play long enough to have an all-star game in my city and, and to have the opportunity to, to walk with my godfather, you know, and Derek Jeter is, is phenomenal. I, I think the city here, San Francisco, hosted this all-star game right. They did a good job. And as you talk about your city, will it be more special? And at what point do you look into trying to break that home run record here at home? I was trying to do it off Beckett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hit that ball pretty good. I got it a little bit behind me and stuff, but I thought I still may have got it up a little bit here. But, um, you know, he made a good pitch. I was trying to get the runner over. You know, Reyes is such a fast runner. You know, my job as a second hitter, I'm thinking, you know, I got to get him over. And, um, you know, but you know, I hit the ball pretty good, so I'm uh, happy. You've expressed your opinion and where you stand with Bud Selig and all that. You respect the man, but okay, Alex Rodriguez, you mentioned there's something between you two that perhaps you might be flying in to see him at some point. Why would that be? Because he's one of my closest friends, and, and, and that's what you're supposed to do. Um, we're ball players, and um, if we don't stick together, you know, who's going to stick together with us? And, and we have to stick together ball, as ball players. You know, it used to be. You know, the boys club, you know, we have this fraternity and, and, and a little bit has been broken. And we as ball players need to get that fraternity back and stick together because it, it is about us and this is what we do. And it's about the fans too coming to the game. But, you know, that fraternity should last forever. 
Thank you so much. Best of luck to you. Go get him. Right, thank you. Here's a base hit into right by Ivan Rodriguez. Throw home by Griffey. What a pick up by Martin to get the out. Rodriguez is tagged out. Griffey's throw up the line, and Russell Martin, the former third baseman, with a short hop pickup and moving over to tag Rodriguez to keep it National League one, American League zero. National League on top, and he talked about the left hamstring issue for A Rod, and there wasn't a whole lot of burst coming around third. Tell you also talked, Joe, and pointed out correctly about how good a play that was by Russell Martin. The reason it was such a good play, it wasn't a short hop, it was an in-between hop. Plus, when you're receiving a throw from right field, you don't know how close that runner is. You don't know whether it's going to be a collision or whether he's four feet away, but a fine, fine play by Russell Martin. 1-1 pitch to right, squirts away from Rodriguez, and the count now 1-2. and two. Here it is one more time. The in-between hop, soft hands, you don't know where the runner is. But fortunately for Russell, he was far enough away for him to make the tag rather easily. Good play. Beckett in his second inning of work, pitching to David Wright. And a check swing foul. We had the interview with Barry Bonds. And, uh, we're glad that Jose Moda is with us. And Barry stopped by to talk. And he was talking about Alex Rodriguez. If you didn't understand the reference, I think they were talking about, did you see Morneau take over at first base? Should... Alex Rodriguez someday be in a position to break the all-time home run record. He would fly to see the record fall and be there for Alex Rodriguez. Rodriguez is 31 years old. He'll turn 32 later this month. He has 494 home runs. And with his age, with his ability, with the numbers that he has piled up to this point in his career, he seems to be the one that has the most legitimate shot. If he can stay healthy and tracking down Bonds or Aaron or who's ever in the top spot. As you look at the career numbers for the top five, 3 2 pitch, right fouls it out of play off to the right. We also talked earlier in the first inning when Bonds came up first and got that huge ovation here from the fans in San Francisco. They love him here, they voted him in as a starter. We're glad that he's a part of this game. They love to watch him as he thrills them night after night. 3-2 pitch to right is grounded off the mound to Roberts. Over to first for the out. But what it tells me, Tim, is that the public has realized that they're going to have to tolerate a certain level of suspicion when it comes to sports, all sports, not just baseball, about what's going on with performance-enhancing drugs. And not everybody loves Barry Bonds, but fans do want to come out and watch him play as attendance is up around baseball, even with the steroids and the HGH and everything that's swirling around this game. Right. Here is Prince Fielder with one out, nobody on, ball one low. I'll tell you, I was as interested as in, in Barry Bonds' comment about saying in the press conference yesterday that he will be present if Alex Rodriguez breaks the home run record. Was that a veiled uh, comment for Henry Aaron? because Henry Aaron is not going to be present when Barry Bonds breaks it. I mean, to me, I thought it was. He's pretty blatant about it. Well, there's no doubt about this. He had a tremendous increase, Bonds did, in his home run production late in his career, mid-30s into his 40s, and what it did was add to what was already a Hall of Fame career. That's right. Here's a line drive into center off the bat of Fielder two up two down I think that part is kind of forgotten about and what was going on in the career of Barry Bonds uh, prior to any of the suspicions popping up and the detail that was put out there in the book Game of Shadows I think and Kenny Rosenthal was down there with us uh, I, I think it's easy to lose sight of the fact Kenny that Barry Bonds has added all of these home runs to what was already a Hall of Fame career there's no question Joe and a different view of Bonds will be required if 10 years from now, 20, 20 years from now, we learn that a majority of star pitchers and hitters in this era use performance-enhancing drug. Let's just say the number was 70% and included a number of the game's biggest stars. The obvious conclusion would be that the drugs were embedded in the game's culture and that Bonds, if he were a user, was just one of many in the game. That's not to excuse him for any possible wrongdoing, but we don't know the whole truth, Joe, and probably never will. Yeah, I think that's the biggest point. We're never going to know, I don't think, as we go forward here, who was doing what when and going back and being able to see lists and start 
picking right. out random dates and saying, okay, well, from this point on, let's disregard these records. And let's say this, this is going to be a cat and mouse game and a wild goose chase from now until the end of time as the chemistry tries to stay ahead of the testing. Baseball's doing all it can to test, I believe, for the drugs that can be tested for. But Kenny or Tim, if there's no known test for HGH, this is not a baseball problem. This is a problem for all sports, period. And I agree with Ken. I mean, whatever the number is, it is in this game and beyond in the other major sports as the pitch is high to Russell Martin and the count two balls, two strikes. The numbers certainly back it up. From 1920 to 1965, there were 16 players that hit 50, 50 home runs or more over a 45-year period. In the last 12 years, there have been 21 players to hit 50 home runs or more. Did that just happen? Well, the clear answer is no, it didn't. The mounting evidence, and run. circumstantial evidence may be, but all the evidence that's out there that would be impossible to believe and as we go forward there are always going to be guys who try and beat the system in all sports as it is here in the all-star game through four one to nothing and l on top built bat in the number two spot and it's a new pitcher and thank goodness his justice was delivered for chris young and the padres that he was the guy who was voted in as the internet recipient of the last spot on the all-star team this guy deserves to be here. no question about it the former princetonian has a 0.82 earn run average at home at petco park in san diego 0.82 two balls and a strike it's interesting that the guy that's to his left at first base is the guy that he had the fight with at Wrigley Field, and currently Young is serving a suspension for that fight at Wrigley. And when those two big bodies got together, it had to be a matchup of the two tallest guys fighting in the history of Major League Baseball. Uh, yeah, here it looks like something out of the movie 300. <laughs> Lee goes down, the two jaw, and then they start getting into it and exchange blows, and both were given suspensions. I guess that, that's exchanging blows. It was kind of whiffing, but it was they, they got the point across. Battle of Thermopylae 2 in Chicago that day. <laughs> Roberts is trying to figure out this big right-hander. Is Chris will be eligible to come back and pitch for the Padres. Game 2 as play resumes after the All-Star break. As it turned out, a year after a year it seems like every good pitcher that could be in the all-star game pitches right before the game but so many of these guys are on regular rest and that's the case with young as roberts draws a leadoff walk and jorge posada will step to the plate with a tying run at first and nobody out here in the fifth inning Posada batting for Beckett, who went two innings, no runs, one hit, two strikeouts, no walks, and doing more of what he's been doing all season for the Red Sox. Now, we've talked about, uh, of course, the, the rivalry, Yankees and Red Sox, with Jorge Posada. He has saved his best year for his 35th year. Think of the wear and tear that he has had behind the plate. And I'll tell you, it's, it's a lot different when you are a catcher on a contender because as you're looking at the Burger Zone or the Burger King Hot Zone, Jorge Posada has played on only winning ball clubs and deserves an awful lot of credit. And this year having his best offensive year. Best offensive year with the average. And a guy who's a free agent to be. And we've said on Yankee telecasts, the games of the week that we've done, this season the guy is at this point completely irreplaceable for New York there is nobody else that they have that's ready to go and take over behind the plate and it's amazing that as you say as he's getting older he's swinging the bat better he's got a good arm and he really hasn't slowed down behind the plate as you look at his ranks this season among major league catchers
Joe, it would seem to me that if Brian Cashman, the general manager of the Yankees, signs the good buddy of Derek Jeter, Jorge Posada, they're going to have to give him three years, and that would probably be for a 35-year-old catcher, one year too many. Here's a jam shot into center. Easy for Beltron, who hauls it in one on one out. Now, here's our tough guy, Eric Burns. The guy is, he'll run into walls, he'll dive, he'll do anything. He's a favorite son of Fox Sports, and yet, Burns, you already packed it in on us, you and Bruin out there, out of the kayak? No, guys, not a whole lot of action out here in McCovey Cove, so I decided to bring Bruin out, and he's been, uh, I brought my own baseball, he's been answering to get in the water, so go get it, boy, go get it, go get it. Over there, over there, go get it, go get it. Yeah, there's a swimming bulldogs, ladies and gentlemen. He's heading the wrong direction. I might have to go in after him. He's swimming to another boat. I think he smells the uh, bacon over there. Come here, boy. Good boy. Uh, the great thing about being from San Francisco, guys, is I got all sorts of people helping me out. First, they bring me up on this boat. Now my dog's gone adrift. And uh, here comes, it looks like Superman in a cape. Going after him. Yeah, just get the dog back, Eric, okay? We got, uh, we've got we got groups that are lining up outside the doors to Fox to complain about. Get your dog back in the boat, Burns. Hey, Joe, listen, let me tell you something, guys. I'm the best dog owner you can find, and here comes Superman to the rescue. My ball, I think, somehow is sinking out here. It's, uh, it's gone. Here's a shot into deep right field. Back at the wall, Ichiro hits it off the wall. It takes a weird carom, and Ichiro may circle the bases. In to score is Roberts. Here comes Ichiro inside the park home run. banners in the outfield and kicked behind Ken Griffey Jr. And by the time he got over to it, no chance to get Ichiro. Because where it hit, it would dictate the carom would go towards center field. And that's why Ken Griffey Jr., you could see it right there. Ken Griffey Jr. is here instead of here. So a screwy carom. And Junior is caught off guard, and that allowed Ichiro to round the bases. A rare, rare inside the park home run in an all-star game. We're checking how rare that is. And Manny Ramirez trying to get some air for Ichiro as Derek Jeter flies into right center for Beltron, two out. So. Eric Burns waiting in McCovey Cove. There's no action really to speak of yesterday in the home run derby out there. The air is really heavy here. Talk to Griffey before the game. And that was the first inside the park home run in all-star game history. Talk to Griffey before the game. He said what's amazing about what Bonds is doing and hitting home runs here and all those splash hits and right is that the baseball just dies here with the heavy air. And it is very difficult to hit home runs in this park. It's short down the line at 309, but then it really juts out to 365 in the power out. One ball, one strike on Morneau, who steps in for the first time tonight. So it's Chris Young giving up the inside the park home run. And it's Ichiro who gets it. That's off the end of the bat, and Junior is there to end the inning. But how about a leadoff walk by Roberts and then Ichiro with an inside the park home run. Catch your breath, Ichiro. You put the AL on top, 2-1. The ace of the Cleveland Indians and changes all over behind him. Carlos Guillen takes over at shortstop. That's not the only one. First pitch to Utley to lead off here in the fifth inning is down for ball one. Carl Crawford is out in left field. And Torrey Hunter is in center as Posada takes over behind the plate. And Tony La Russa, manager of the National League side, is with us and kind enough to join us during the inning. Tony, we have seen some weird bounces and hits so far in this game. It's been a fun game so far. Yeah, it's very competitive, and you're right. Uh, you know, each row got a bloop, and it hits him off the wall. And uh, the one that Jose Reyes hit was a lot of fun to watch. We talked to you before the game about the whole this time it counts. And uh, I sense with you a legitimate pride 
in National League Baseball and forgetting this time it counts, but more telling your team, look, we can compete, we can have fun, but it's about time the National League finally wins one of these games against the AL. Well, we have a real good league, and uh, it's a sore point to get beat in the All-Star game and uh, you know, interleague play. So that's why you play the game. You know, come out here and see if you can have more runs than they do. You've got a guy in Reyes who has led off and stolen a base and scored a run for you. And now you've got Soriano hanging over the plate against Sabathia. You guys, uh, your lineup is going to have its hands full with a lot of hard-throwing pitchers that Jim Leland can bring in the rest of the way. Well, you know, the uh, the guys are going to hit this inning. you got a lot of danger when you were always, you know, threat to break through the talent these guys have. Nothing and one to count. One out, nobody on. And Soriano slugs one in the left, and it's Crawford who looked like he had a tough time seeing it making the catch as he comes in and Jose Reyes will step in with two out nobody on sometimes you catch the ball sometimes the ball catches you and that's what appeared to happen to Carl Crawford then he ran into it Tony I know baseball uh, has you running around when you get here to San Francisco and you're you're from the Bay Area and your family is here do you have any time to take a breath and, and relax and actually enjoy this experience of being the manager of that team no I uh, definitely enjoy what, you know, you don't have much time anywhere, but here there's a lot of activity. But to be in the clubhouse with these guys is a real treat. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Then you watch the workout and the actual BP today, and uh, you see the other team. The talent is it's fun to be around. I thought it was interesting that you told us that the guy you may keep back, position player-wise, in case you run out of an infielder and you need somebody, is your own star Albert Pujols. Is Jose Reyes shoots one into left center, and what a good yeah. play by it's hard to believe Tory Hunter. Holding Reyes on that ball, wow. Tony, to a single. How about that play? That's uh, not one I enjoy seeing. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but Pujols is your guy. You you told us before the game that if need be, you'd play Pujols just about anywhere on the field. Well, we got strapped a little bit. Uh, this really outstanding Miguel Cabrera, who was a second, third baseman, uh, injured his left shoulder and was only available to pinch hit. So that took Freddy Sanchez, who can do everything, and he's going to play third here when David Wright goes out. So. You need to save somebody, and you know Albert. I mean, I'd play him anyway. This guy's got such instincts and talent. Yeah, he's played third base for you. He's played left field. Even you said shortstop. I saw him play shortstop in spring training. He handled himself well there. I count spring training. He plays yeah. second. He plays second base too. You have note cards from spring training you check back on. No, nah, just uh, these guys don't let me forget that I wrote them in there. So <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> hard to forget. Tony, thanks for your time. Okay. All right. We give you the entire story. Bruin, the dog of Eric Burns, is safe back on the boat. The story has a happy ending. Into the sixth, two to one, American League. He's here also in 1961 with the Roberto Clemente game-winning hit. Here is Alex Rodriguez facing Francisco Cordero and shooting one high in the air to left center for Beltran, who hauls it in one out. A-Rod is one for three. Hey, if a player hits a home run, Striking one of the MasterCard Hit It Here signs. One lucky fan in attendance wins a million dollars and a baseball week of their dreams, including tickets to the 2008 All-Star Game at Yankee Stadium in its final year, courtesy of MasterCard. For more details, visit Priceless.com or call 1-800-MC-ASSIST. Here is Vladimir Guerrero. And Vladimir fouls it away those are more reachable than some of the other aspects to this park as you look around the stadium that has been here since 2002 AT&T Park see that glove out in left center field that is 501 feet away last night Vlad Guerrero hit one over 500 feet in the home run hitting contest two out here in the sixth inning this is the prettiest park in my estimation, forget just in baseball, period. Couldn't agree more. When you look at the dimensions, opened in 2000. McCovey Cove out beyond the wall and right. Most of the World Series in 2002. And AT&T Park is the first pro sports venue with Wi-Fi in it. Which, Tim, allows you to go online anywhere you want down in the seats. That's here at AT&T Park. Ball one down and away to Carl Crawford. One of my favorite features at this ballpark, among many. 1-0 pitch with two out, nobody on. Good pitch by Cordero, who's been terrific since the Brewers picked him up from 
Texas. Cordero was an all-star with Texas. He was dethroned as the starter with the setup guy there. Involved in the Carlos Lee trade last year before the deadline. And he has done nothing but rack up one save after another on a terrific Milwaukee Brewers team. And received more votes by the players than any other reliever. And that uh, is a surefire fact that Cordero must be proud of. Crawford, who at one time in his life was recruited to play option quarterback at Nebraska. UCLA looked at him as a basketball player, just a tremendous athlete. He picked baseball. He's had 50 or more steals in three of the last four seasons, and a guy who is such a good athlete. He has a lot of his teammates in this All-Star game talked to a couple of guys about Crawford. He said he just makes their jaw hit the floor with the things he can do athletically on a field. Saito of the Dodgers is going down to loosen for the National League in what is a two to one game as we play here already in the sixth. Marty Mason of the Cardinals introduces himself to Saito. 43,965 stadium record. Here at AT&T Park and with two out nobody on Crawford has a full count. Crawford chops another foul pretty good at bat against Cordero. Even though the Giants have had a ton of problems this year on the field they do have the Dodgers moving in this weekend for a weekend series here at AT&T Park. So a big week here in San Francisco. Crawford hits one in the air to right. That is crushed at the wall. It's gone. Carl Crawford home run, 3-1 to one AL. What an ending to a good long at bat by Crawford in the Tampa Bay Devil Ray has added to the American League lead. Second All-Star game for Crawford and first All-Star game home run. Cordero gets it up and so does Crawford. Looked like a slider. Crushed that ball. Here's Carlos Guillen takes a strike. Ian hits one to the left of Utley. Good play as he gets up and throws for the out. Two home runs in this game, and inside the Parker by Ichiro, his first in the U.S., and then the more conventional type from Crawford to make it 3-1 AL after five and a half. Driving in. Verlander. Verlander follows Sabathia, who took over for Beckett, who followed Dan Heron. Verlander, who has a no-hitter this season. He did that against the Milwaukee Brewers, which is no small feat with the kind of team they have. Deals low in a 3-1 to one game. AL on top, and Beltron is up on the count here, 2-0. and oh. Sabathia, one inning, one hit. Verlander's 10-3 with a 3.14 ERA. Misses, 3-0 and oh in the National League. Would love to get Beltron on with Griffey. And David Wright coming up. Taking all the way, three and one. Carlos Beltran taking the Adam Wainwright curveball to end the season for the Mets last year. This one is ripped in the air to right. Back is Guerrero. This ball is off the wall. Beltran wasn't hustling to first, and now he turns it on to get to third safely with a leadoff triple. Another ball that takes a weird bounce off the wall, and Beltron turns it into a sliding triple. Yeah, more predictable than the ball hit by Ichiro. You can see Guerrero right there, the ball coming off rather predictably. And Guerrero getting to it quickly, a strong throw to third, but Beltron with a triple.
can see thinking either first home run, second an easy double, right. and then after watching the carom, I better get going. I've yeah. got a triple. Right. Now Griffey. Ken fouls it away for strike one on a 98-mile-an-hour pitch. Let's go down to Ken Rosenthal with Derek Jeter. Derek, you spent time with Willie Mays yesterday. You walked him in during the pregame festivities. What was that like? It was an honor, I mean, to say the least, to get an opportunity to sit down with Willie, me, and Griff for about about 30 minutes and uh, ask him some questions and get to know him a little bit. I, I enjoyed it. It's something that I'll take from this All-Star game. Yankees' first 29 games after the break are against sub-500 sub clubs. Can you guys get back in the race? Yeah, it doesn't make a difference who we're playing. We, we need to take the approach like every game is the biggest game, and, uh, you know, we don't have the luxury of relaxing. Uh, I think if we go out there and we play like we did the last week of the season, we'll be all right. Derek, thanks very much. Joe, back to you. All right, thank you. Derek is a past MVP of an All-Star game. That's into right, and an easy sack fly by Griffey, who has driven in both runs for the National League. Griffey with a sack fly to right, and the triple by Beltron turns into an immediate run, 3-2 AL on top. You know, the thing about Griffey, Tim, talking to him before the game, you know, the Reds are, for the most part, out of the race in the National League Central, albeit a weaker division in baseball, and Griffey now is getting questions about a possible trade. You know, he said they're going to do what they do, and they'll either try and trade me or not, but Griffey has the veto power because he's a 10-5 and five player, and if he wants to make a switch and move on from Cincinnati, he will, and if he doesn't like the deal, he will say no. We talked earlier about Mike Hargrove stepping down as the manager of the Seattle Mariners. Well, Jerry Naron was fired as the manager of the Reds a couple of weeks ago, and his job taken over by Pete McCannon. But you, you're thinking that Adam Dunn, Adam Dunn or Ken Griffey Jr., uh, could be traded before the trading deadline. David Wright shatters his bat, floats a hit into center field, and add to that the White Sox, a team that just can't be figured out with the kind of talent they have last in baseball and team average. And that's another team that contending clubs or clubs trying to get back into contention can look to, and Kenny Williams, the GM, is going to have his cell phone ringing. Whether they pull the trigger on any deals on the heels of getting Burley signed, who knows? Chicago White Sox only two games in front of the Kansas City Royals in the American League Central. Here's Matt Holliday from the Rockies at his coming out party here last night, the home run derby, pinch hitting for Francisco Cordero, who went an inning and allowed that home run to Carl Crawford, who's right now is the difference in the game, 0-2 on holiday. So Verlander, is in his third season, pitching in his first All-Star game, misses with Ball one, the 2006 Rookie of the Year in the American League. 17 wins and the most by a Detroit rookie since Mark the Bird Fidrich had 19 in 1976. The block by Posada, the count's two and two. That's when Bird, Bird, Bird was the word in Detroit. Deki Okajima is getting loose for the Red Sox. And Johan Santana is to his right. If Verlander needs help within the inning, it would be Okajima. If he gets out of the inning, it will likely be Santana next on the mound for the AL. Breaking ball is high and it counts full. Matt Holliday with a 341 average. Second best average in the National League and the most hits in the National League. Wright takes off on a foul ball. 3 2 count, the runner was going. Russell Martin, the right hander, is on deck. Chase Utley scheduled the hit. He's in the hold, so you would think uh, Okajima is getting ready for Chase Utley should he hit in this inning. Matt 
Matt Holliday, part of a good young group of hitters for the Rockies. What a good stop by Morneau. It found him a rocket to the right side of the infield, two out. Down to second is the tying run, David Wright, for Russell Martin. Here's your chance to really act like a fan. Act out a scene from October baseball and win tickets to October baseball. Just go to actober, A-C-T-O-B-E-R dot com to enter. That's October with an A. What do you think? Russell Martin? Any Entourage fans out there? Been compared to Turtle from the HBO show Entourage. You see the top Turtle loves sneakers. He loves his sneakers. Runner at second, two out, and Martin hits one down the right field line. Foul. So close to tying this game here in the sixth. Behind the fastball, and a loud strike. And off of one of San Francisco's finest. He takes over at second base. Freddy Sanchez is over at third, representing the Pittsburgh Pirates. But there are more changes. Aaron Rowan to the Phillies is in center. Holiday stays in the game after pinch hitting. He's in right. And Brian McCann will do the catching for Saito. Two balls and a strike on Roberts. They are the numbers for Saito. 23 saves for the Dodgers. And that good breaking ball makes it two and two. So while we try and run uphill and scramble and figure out who's in the game defensively and where these guys are hitting, what must the job be like for the home plate umpire, in this case, Bruce Freming, who got his rest last night. He's got the lineup card in his pocket. And if his looks anything like mine, he couldn't fit mine in his pocket. It's so big, the scorecard I have. But Freming somehow tries to keep track of it and will play you his conversation with Tony LaRusso on all the changes as we play here in the top of the seventh. Roberts walked and scored his first time up. Three two pitch ground ball to Hudson backs up a bit. Two time gold glove award winner throws out Roberts and here's Fremming talking to LaRusso. All right, in the third spot, you got Hudson. All right. You got Rowan, R-O-W-N-D, fourth. You got Sanchez, five. Will you call these upstairs? Yes, sir. And McCann, six. McCann is six. Uh-huh. We have found a mistake. McCann is not six. McCann yeah. is seven. Right. Holiday is six because he pinch hit in the bottom of the six, though he has to stay there. So I'm sure those two worked it out as if we had time to let that bit of tape continue. The scintillating conversation between Bruce Fremming and Tony LaRusso. So it's McCann batting seven. It's Saito, the pitcher, in the number eight spot. And Billy Wagner starts to think about loosening up down the left field line for the National League. Posada, his second at bat fly to center his first time up, takes ball one. We talked about the numbers, Joe, of Saito, and I guess the biggest number is his age. 37 years old, a first-time All-Star. What a thrill it must be. Wait that long for this big an honor. Line drive caught by Lee at first. Two out here in the top of the seventh inning. And back to the top of the lineup, Torrey Hunter will get his first hit bat of this game. We look ahead to Saturday. The Astros and the Cubs in high def. Other games, the Cardinals and Phillies are the Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants as that rivalry is renewed right here. And that starts this Saturday right here on Fox. And by the way, if you tuned in to our pregame show tonight, as Hunter goes up there hacking strike one. 
Hopefully you caught some of the interview between Willie Mays, Derek Jeter, and Ken Griffey Jr., who conducted the interview of Willie Mays. More of that interview will be played in our pregame show this Saturday before the Fox Saturday Baseball Game of the Week. Torrey Hunter into left for Alfonso Soriano. And we go to the bottom of the seventh, but before I tell you all you need to know about how good that pitch is, getting Carlos Lee to offer it this in the dirt. So Lee is gone and a ball basically off the plate and Soriano will bat for the second time he lined out to left his first time up. Yeah, you don't have to throw a strike to get one and Santana just proved it once again. Get the big strong guys get ahead of them. And if you can deceive them as Santana did you'll get them. Santana has led baseball in strikeouts over the last two years. Third All-Star game, eighth season, and both Houston and Florida whiffed on him. They each had him in their organization, but it's been the Twins that have seen this guy blossom and wanted to really probably the best left-hander in the game among starting pitchers. And I really can't think of anybody off the top of my head that I'd rather have on the mound if I needed to win a big game. No. Nothing and two is the count on Soriano. That's foul. A lot of people forget that Soriano played in Japan for three years before coming to the Yankees. 95, 96, 97. Swings a big bat, a heavy bat, almost a throwback in that sense, and he hangs right over the plate. And a strikeout looking for Santana. Two batters, two strikeouts here in the seventh. AT&T Park and the list of those who are talking to you tonight. Tim McCarver, Ken Rosenthal, Jose Moda, Eric Burns out on the water and our Flomax game summary. Ichiro, the first inside the park home run in all-star game history that baseball is headed to the hall of fame as we speak reyes three for three with a couple of singles he has scored a run stolen a base and griffey has both rbis and an outfield assist for the nl here's an 0-1 to reyes tough to get him he a long throw good play and a one two three seventh inning for johan santana eighth inning already in san francisco good game 3-2, American League on top. As he fires a fastball in for a strike to Mike Lowell, third baseman from the Red Sox, having a great year. Seems silly to say for an all-star player, but he is putting together maybe his best, and that's in the gap in left center. Driving in a ton of runs, and he's on to start the eighth inning. Mike Lowell's teammate is Big Poppy. David Ortiz and the HP player personality profile. Childhood hero Michael Jordan. His hobby is cooking. Who knew? Favorite NFL team, the Green Bay Packers, and he is a serious Packer fan. And he has written a book that just shot right up the bestseller list. If, he, if his hobby wasn't cooking, his nickname would be Little Poppy. Instead, it's Big Poppy, and his book is called Big Poppy, My Story of Big Dreams and Big Hits. And it has been a big hit, especially with Red Sox fans who can't get enough in their hands about their beloved team. Here's a foul down the left field line. What a good play by Freddie Sanchez. Dealing with a bullpen down there, and that's exactly why LaRusso wanted him on this team with his versatility and what he can do with a glove on his hand. And you can safely say that's a rare play for Freddy Sanchez because normally he's a second baseman for the Pittsburgh Pirates playing third and that is strange area down there. But he will tell you that in years past he has been more comfortable over there. He is still learning second base on the fly. and He's just good. He's just a good solid player and yes, last year's top hitter average wise in the National League. Here's Grady Sizemore first at bat for a guy who combines power and speed which is something that 
a GM for any team in any sport is always looking for that combination, and he is terrific leading off for the Indians. Oh, and two from Wagner. Cleveland Indians only a game behind Detroit. And I guess as importantly, ahead in the wild card race in the American League. Hard to believe, but the National League pitching staff has done that for the first time all night. A strikeout. The top pitch velocity, Verlander hit 100 for the AL. Brad Penny hit 96 on our radar gun for the Dodgers. And that, believe it or not, with all these all-star pitchers, is the first strikeout tonight for the NL staff. As we play here in the eighth, it's one on, two out. And the batter will be Victor Martinez, the catcher for the Cleveland Indians. You started to talk about the Indians. That's going to be a good race the entire second half between the Indians and the Tigers in the AL Central. Everybody expected the Indians to compete last year with the Tigers. But the Tigers somewhat of a surprise. No surprise this year. And as you mentioned earlier in the game, they may be the best team in the game once they get their bullpen straightened out. But Cleveland hanging tough, only a game behind Detroit in the American League Central. Martinez is batting in the number five spot right now, hitting for the pitcher Santana, who had a perfect inning. Two strikeouts and a ground out. And now the bad news for the National League is they trail here and staring at their 10th consecutive loss to the American League is Tony La Russa's team is going to have to deal with closers now the rest of the way. Papelbon is getting loose down the right field line and puts the closer for the Mariners we've already heard from Jim Leland is the closer tonight for the AL. That's ripped down the left field line off the bat of Martinez and gone. Victor Martinez opens it up a bit, makes it 5-2 AL here in the eighth. And he is enjoying every moment of this trot around the bases. Yes, he is. At AT&T Park. Realize that for Victor Martinez, since he became the Indians' regular catcher in 2004, he leads all Major League catchers in home runs, RBIs, runs, and hits. Number two in average. That's a pinch hit home run for the backstop for the Indians. You saw that uh, graphic, the last pinch hit home run, Hank Blaylock back in 2003, and that won the game for the American League in Chicago. A fastball, middle of the plate, Rocketed to left. <laughs> AL leads it by three. Carl Crawford, who is homered in this game already. Takes ball one down and away. Crawford homered in the sixth minute against Cordero. So that'll make Indians fans proud as they watch their catcher, Victor Martinez, go deep. Indians looking for their first title since 1948. And what they have to him now on their staff is that ace and that number one starter that they maybe didn't have in that run they had in the 90s when they came close but couldn't beat Atlanta and could not beat the Marlins. Sabathia is that guy. Two balls, two strikes from Billy Wagner, who was touched up here in the eighth inning for a couple of runs. Crawford bounces out to the shortstop. Reyes shows off the speed, but Reyes has the great arm. Three American League home runs tonight. Inside the park, home run for Ichiro. Crawford into right off Cordero. And in this inning, Victor Martinez off the bench, off Wagner. 5-2, AL. And the closer for the first place Red Sox in the game. 
Third season, second All-Star game. And an ERA of under one closing for the Red Sox last year. And after a, an attempt to go back to the rotation early in spring training, they've put Papelbon back where he belongs. And with Del Carmen now and Hideki Okajima setting up Jonathan Papelbon, that's about as good as any bullpen gets. Talked about it earlier in the year that the Red Sox discovered their mistake early and got him back to, as you said, where he belongs. And that's stopping, not starting. Still 0-2 on Derek Lee. Hideki Okajima was voted in by the internet vote. And Papelbon said both he and his wife voted the maximum 25 times each to try and get him here. Well, that, that's kind of the way about it. You know, he's, he's got that delightful sense of humor, that wonderfully whimsical way about it, that makes him a perfect stopper. Lee floats one into shallow center, might drop. Hunter will not get there, and Derek Lee is on to start the eighth. That is the first hit out of the number two spot in the National League lineup, and Lee is aboard one for two in this game. Makes the pitch he wants to in on the hands of Derek Lee, but because Torrey Hunter has to play Lee so deeply, the ball drops in front. Derek, you got the green light. You see something? Is that you, all right? Orlando Hudson digs his way in first at bat since taking over defensively for Chase Utley. A likable and very talented second baseman for the Philadelphia Phillies. Chase Utley and our HV personality profile brings us this. A good fisherman at an early age, I'll say. I mean, that's the Guinness Book of World Record stuff there. Played for the Phillies in the Long Beach Pony League. First team All-American at UCLA, so he likes Eric Burns' dog's name of Bruin, and he likes to dance at weddings, <laughs> which makes Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson very happy. Strike two on Orlando Hudson, who is a Gold Glove Award winner in the AL with Toronto in the very next year his first year with the Diamondbacks. I'll have to ask uh, Chase if he limits his dancing to weddings only. I don't know. 0 oh, 2 the count. It would be a fair question. I, yeah, do I you like so. to dance at weddings? Sure. 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 Do you feel like people are there saying, I wonder how McCarver dances? <laughs> and then you get out there and you feel like all eyes are on you. You don't do that? Um, I used to like to dance a lot more uh, before knee problems. Okay. I'm sure Chase will incur those somewhere down the Posada will. Line. Yes. Yes. 0 oh, 2 is the count. Another foul off the bat of Hudson. On deck is Aaron Rowan, who has not hit in this game yet. And after you have Rowan, then you get into Freddy Sanchez, Holiday, McCann. As a lot of these National Leaguers will get their first at bats here. Down the stretch in this game, 0-2 pitch. Derek Lee takes off, Hudson strikes out, and that was Lee stealing off Papelbon. No chance for Posada. Stolen base, Derek Lee. He's at second with one out. Derek, not only did Derek Lee have a good jump, but he chose the right pitch on which to run. That looked like the splitter down. You could see Posada kind of peeking around Orlando Hudson and then making the throw, but no chance to get lead. One of the reasons why Tony La Russa selected Aaron Rowan to be a reserve on this NL team is what he does in center field, and he endeared himself to Philly fans last year with that crash into the wall and the broken nose that followed. It was an ugly crash, but once he did that, he was a Philly favorite. Ball one from Papelbon. Stands up there like Ron Say almost. Yeah, yeah, that's good. The Penguin, Ron Say, the Penguin, who played third base for so many years for the Los Angeles Dodgers. We've discovered another Penguin. Up and away, 2-0. This isn't the Penguin, this is Rowan. Last year, May 11th, 
against the Mets of all teams, and that's called giving yourself up. Full bore into the wall. Facial laceration, the broken nose. And as you said, uh, Philadelphia fans do not forget plays like that. Rowan slashes at it, fouls it. It's two and one. Aaron is batting in the cleanup spot as Trevor Hoffman gets loose. Griffey, while he was in there, had a very nice night. Had an outfield assist, a two-out RBI hit, and a sack fly. It was well hit to right. So two RBIs for Griffey, and Rowan fouls it back. This has been a... And the National Leaguers, even here in the eighth inning, are still top-stepping it, watching everything they can out of the dugout. The same for the AL side. This has been a series between the AL and NL throughout history since the first All-Star game in 1933. Arch Ward's idea, it's been a series of streaks. The AL is trying to continue theirs. They've won nine straight games that have gone to a decision, the tie in 2002. Two-two pitch. Here are the streaks that have happened. Nationally won eight straight. They won 11 straight between 72 and 82. The AL between 88 and 93, six, and 97 on. This current nine-game streak with that tie mixed in. Arusa and Leland making the decisions and the stare of sling blade into the plate to get the sign from Jonathan Papelbon. 2-2. Full count and squirts away to send Derek Lee to third. That should be a pass ball. Does the dominance of the American League over the National League for the last 10 years, the 9-0-1 record, does that mean the American League is a better league than the National League? When you combine the interleague play, yes. The answer to that is yes. American League has been so dominant not only in the All-Star game, but in inter interleague play. They've also won 11 of the last, or make that seven out of the last 11 World Series. Francisco Rodriguez up at warming the American League. Rowan strikes out on a pitch up and in on three and two. May have chased ball four, and he is out number two here in the eighth. Second strikeout for Papelbon. On a pitch that was very close, but appeared to be high. Papelbon has been experimenting with a cutter, which has made Mariano Rivera a lot of money with the Yankees. Rivera throws to Posada. Now Papelbon in this All-Star game throwing to Posada. And Sanchez off the end of the bat into right center field. It will be Hunter making the grab out of center. Sizemore cutting in front of him. We go to the ninth inning. Papelbon a scoreless eight. As Guillen leads off in this ninth inning against Trevor Hoffman, who is the all-time save king with 507 career saves. And J.J. Hardy takes over at short for Jose Reyes, who played until the ninth inning. Reyes was three out of four while he was in there. And J.J. Hardy, part of that terrific young infield for the Brewers. With Braun at third, he was off to an incredible start. Weeks at second, and Prince Fielder over at first. That Milwaukee team's going to be good for a long time. Two one pitch. Sounded like Keehan broke his bat. Hudson to his right. Good play. One out. As we play here in the ninth inning, you should realize that the most valuable player of tonight's game will be presented as Chevrolet Tahoe Hybrid. It's coming up in our Chevrolet postgame show. And we thank Chevy as always for being one of our sponsors. One out here in the ninth inning, and Brian Roberts, who has played since Polanco got one at bat in the third, digs in 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. Posada on deck. 
Hoffman doesn't show any signs of slowing down. 507 career saves. He's got an ERA of under two. 25 saves this year. For the first place, San Diego Padres. Padres can pitch the number one ERA in all of Major League Baseball. A good bullpen with Hoffman as their anchor in a rotation that features Maddox, Wells, the veterans, Young, and Peavy. The younger pitchers, both all-stars. You and I talked about it on Saturday. If there is a team in need of a slugger, it's the San Diego Padres. Their pitching is terrific. One two pitch Roberts has to wait on it and bounces to Lee who flips for the out. Three one of the put out this week on Fox Saturday baseball you'll see either the Astros and the Cubs the Dodgers and the Giants or the Cardinals and the Phillies check local listings for the game in your area. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, and high def only on Fox. Good matchups right out of the gate, and more of that interview between Derek Jeter, Ken Griffey Jr., and Willie Mays in our pregame show. 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Here's strike one on Posada. Tim Trevor Hoffman has that you know it's coming but still can't hit it pitch the changeup. You just cannot hold up combining that with the fastball fastball changeup. The difference between the <laughs> difference between the two is is great. <laughs> what you can't you oh, can't guy. squeeze out a, a salient baseball point looking at uh, no. the dead pirate from the <laughs> bottom of the sea. That is a grotesque mask. That, that isn't. That's prettier. Yeah. Much. That is just low from Hoffman, two and one on Posada. It's a good try though. National League in the ninth inning. We'll have Holiday McCann. The first two up. And then a pinch hitter. That's a strike. Tony La Russa still has Pujols on his bench, Dimitri Young. Jim Leland still has Alex Rios and Michael Young on his bench. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Full count. This Dimitri is a great story. It was without a job. Spring training rolled around, signed a late deal with Washington, a minor league deal, started in minor league camp. Had fun with those kids, and he's come to the Nationals and done nothing but just rake. 339. That's into center field. Back is Rowan. On the run, it's off the wall. Posada has a two out. Stand up double. Posada waits on the changeup and hammers it to center field off the wall. Aaron Rowan giving chase to no avail. A two out double by Posada. Trying to get an extra run. JJ Putz is getting ready for the Mariners out in the bullpen representing the Mariners. Jim Leland believes he's got the nastiest stuff going. He is perfect in save chances this year. Torrey Hunter at the plate, 0 for 1. That's a foul tip. Back to second. Posada will go, and the count's 0 and 2. Balls, two strikes, runner at second, two out. 0 2 pitch. And that came back and caught Bruce Fremick. Who will remember his last All Star game with a bruise. That 
did not feel good on a chilly night. Last year, he will obviously be retiring after this year, but that's one thing you will not miss, those foul tips. Umpires do have protection. You may see that. It's an undergear. Bruce Freming, only two umpires in the history of the game have umpired more than 5,000 games, and Bruce is one of them. First game was in 1971. A guy who is respected and has been good for baseball since umpiring beginning in 1971. That's in the dirt. McCann blocks it. And the count still one and two. Actually, the schedule, the first game for Bruce Freming back in 1971 was snowed out in New York. Marvel's career he has had. He was the umpire at home plate when we were at Fenway for that Jason Veritek, Alex Rodriguez fight that took place. Yeah, right. And in some ways kick-started the Red Sox. And there's a picture that I'm sure is hanging in his basement. Whatever he is trying to do right there, it didn't work. <laughs> Two pitches fouled back and out of play. Formation. Holiday is 0 for 1. Grounded out his first time. Hit the ball hard. His other at bat. <laughs> Puts deals just heat and it's 0 and 2. Well, he's got, uh, you talked about Trevor Hoffman and that fastball and changeup. The speeds of those two pitches are so different. So is J.J. Puts with his fastball and a splitter. Three pitch closers. Those are hard to beat. When he's getting those pitches over, he is devastating. Jim Leland joking with us on the air that since the Tigers play Seattle next, he'd love to wear out puts and try and put him on the shelf jokingly but he has all the respect in the world for the talent of this kid as he strikes out holiday to start the bottom of the ninth let's go back and listen in to the conversation between Posada and Fremming after that last ball hitting hit the home plate umpire the first one was worse than this one but they both hurt I'm going to play eight and a half. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am hurting. He is a beauty, a great man, a funny guy. And that was the second one. And that was the first one that caught a lot of arm. And then this one in the bottom of the ninth inning caught more chest protector than arm. But wow. Quite an end to this one for Fremming. One out, nobody on. And here is Brian McCann who fouls it back. McCann having a down year and even went so far as to question his inclusion as an all-star here representing the Atlanta Braves hitting 262 hit 333 last year and has been a big run producer for the Braves Atlanta Braves once again only two games behind the New York Mets Bobby Cox has won 14 of 15 division titles he and John Sherholtz have been one of the most successful tandems in the history of the game. John Sherholtz, the general manager, and Bobby, the manager. One ball, one strike. Dimitri Young is in the on-deck circle. No bat with a pitcher spot coming up. Hoffman pitches a scoreless inning. And with one out, a 1-1 pitch to Brian McCann. Rocket foul. McCann is the young catcher. The younger catcher is Jared Saltalamacchia for the Braves, and they're trying to force his bat into the lineup because he is just too good of a hitter to wait around after they have locked up McCann as their everyday catcher. Yeah, they did that last week with Jared. He played a lot of first base for the Atlanta Braves.
another foul. Steve Horn is our editorial consultant here in the booth, the smartest guy in the booth, I can say, at least among the three of us, doing a lot of work for us in this All-Star game, and this 78th All-Star game produced by Pete Macheska, directed by Bill Webb. And there are other names that we will try and get to you. A lot of people working awfully hard to bring you the sights and sounds here from San Diego as this 78th All-Star game wraps up. One-two pitch, one out, nobody on, and a pop-up. Two out. If I said San Diego, I certainly meant San Francisco. Did I say San Diego? Yeah. Okay. That's a good work, Joe. Way to close down the broadcast. Here comes Dimitri Young, the switch hitter in the last hope for the National League to try and extend this and end what is a nine-game losing streak? Joe, you talked about Dimitri earlier, and I, I talked to him yesterday, and I said, who in this clubhouse is happier to be here than you? And he said, my children. He has had, he has been through a lot in the last couple of years, including being released last year from the Detroit Tigers prior to, the, prior to them winning the AL pennant. And then Dimitri has had some legal issues was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in spring training and by his own admission was really doing poorly he said there was a tombstone with his name on it the way he was living his life one ball one strike it was Tony La Russa's first baseman and the predecessor to Mark McGuire in St. Louis before the Cardinals picked him up Dimitri is trying to extend this game for Soriano, who waits on deck. Two out, nobody on. One ball, one strike. Oh. Just ties him up with high heat. You can hear Dimitri grunting on that swing. He just was handcuffed. Strike two, and the National League down to their final strike. And you can tell uh, by the hitter's swings at a particular pitcher how good his stuff is. And with puts, hitters don't have too good of swings. Ninety-eight. As hard as we've seen puts throw in this ninth. Thanks also to our replay producer, Carol Langley McDermott, associate directors Aaron Stoikov and Larry Lancaster, the associate producer Judy Wong, the broadcast associates Brian Biederman, Von Wagner, coordinating producer of the pregame show Scott Ackerson, produced by Gary Lang, directed by Rich Russo, senior producer Fox Sports Bill Brown, and the executive producers Ed Gorin and David Hill. One two pitch. Young grounds to the right side. Roberts can't make the play, and this game will continue. I would imagine that'll be a base hit. Brian Roberts with a long way to go, a tricky hop on the outfield grass, and even though Dimitri Young is not a fast runner, I would think it would be a base hit and is. So a base hit for Dimitri and Soriano, who's 0 for 2, will dig in. Now if Soriano gets on, he brings up the tying run in J.J. Hardy, the young shortstop for the Brewers is tied for fifth in the National League with 18 home runs. More home runs in the first half of this season than any of his other previous big league at bats totaled up. He has just had an explosion offensively. But it's Soriano who has been hot of late with the Cubs, Tim, who are bearing down on the Brewers only four and a half games out here at the All-Star break. After a six-week period, the first six weeks of the season where Alfonso Soriano did not have a home run at Wrigley Field, but he has picked it up greatly recently. Cubs enter the second half of the season four and a half games behind the Milwaukee Brewers. 
Cubs need to get Derek Lee to add to that average with some home runs, driving in runs. But Derek Lee is trying to get healthy after an injury riddled 2006. Cubs hoping the power returns soon. One ball, one strike, one on, two out. Two and one now on Soriano. Among leadoff hitters in baseball since 2002, Soriano first in home runs, extra base hits, slugging percentage, and at bats per RBI. A totally closed stance at the start, hanging over the plate, 2-1 pitch. Almost hung right into that pitch from Puts. Well, that's what pitchers try to do to Soriano. You've got to get him off the plate. When the left elbow is almost on the plate, you have to clear that elbow and make him think inside. That's what Puts was doing. So it's three and one, and it's getting more interesting here in the ninth inning for the National League. Dimitri stays put. Soriano hits one down the right field line. Well hit into the corner. This ball is gone. Home run Soriano. It's a one run game in San Francisco. Third career All-Star game home run for Soriano. When you look at Soriano, he weighs about 155, 160 pounds, but it's that, that life strength. This pitch up a little bit, but outside, and he just flicks those strong hands and pops one out of this AT&T ballpark. Takes a lot of strength to hit a ball that far the other way when you weigh 160 pounds. Soriano just whips the bat and hits that home run to right. There have been seven comeback wins in All-Star Game history when a team's been trailing after eight. Here is J.J. Hardy, his first at bat in a 5-4 game, ninth inning, two out. Ball one with Derek Lee waiting on deck. And Francisco Rodriguez getting loose for the AL in their bullpen. Call it Francisco Rodriguez of the Angels. Say Valverde of the Diamondbacks getting loose on the other side. How's this one going to end? Two and one to Hardy. First All Star game at bat for J.J. Hardy. Dad Mark, a pro tennis player, his mom Susie, a professional golfer. Top home run hitting shortstop in the National League. Three and one from Butts. JJ falling behind Soriano, three and one. He homered. Now he's behind JJ Hardy, three and one. Rodriguez seems like he's ready if Jim Leland wants to go that way and Hardy continues this game. Yeah. How about a two out walk to put the tying run on. This is what has kept this game alive. It was ruled a base hit. A 
play that Roberts couldn't make. Then a home run by Soriano, a walk to J.J. Hardy, and a double switch as puts will come out, much to his surprise. And Francisco Rodriguez will come in and try and end it. Team and Derek Lee is at the plate. Ball one. Francisco Rodriguez has given up two home runs all year. Sizemore moves to center. Rios is now in the game in right. Two home runs allowed by Francisco Rodriguez. The last, the 24th of April. The last home run that Derek Lee has hit is June 3rd. That's foul and a broken bat. And these two are facing each other, Tim, for the first time. Yeah, you notice Mike Lowell was right on the line for that ball. Also, a one-run lead changes the defense in the latter innings. And there's Lowell playing right on the line. And had that ball been fair, Mike has a chance to make a play on it. One ball, one strike. Rodriguez is pitching in his second All-Star game. Pitched as a 22-year-old on the AL team in 04, the game in Houston. Been pitching since the age of seven in Caracas, Venezuela. The 1-1. Check swing, and Posada keeps the tying run at first base with that play. Much easier for a catcher to dig a breaking ball out of the dirt because you anticipate the breaking ball going down. A fine play by Posada to keep it in front of him and keep Hardy at first base. Rodriguez, the youngest pitcher in baseball history to get to 100 saves when he did it in September last year at the age of 24 years old, 227 days. The closer for the Angels. Breaking ball two and two. Derek Lee gave up on that pitch, but it broke so much over the inside part of the plate. Two two. Good job by Lee to lay off, and now the tying run. With all these angles in the outfield. Tying run at first. Hardy will take off. We'll have to do it again. Derek Lee is hitting 330 on the year, fifth best in the National League with six home runs. Everybody's standing here at AT&T Park. Check swing, he did not go, and it's two on with two out, and Orlando Hudson coming up. Tony La Russa is going to stick with Orlando Hudson. The only player he has left on his bench is Albert Pujols. As Derek Lee holds up on that breaking ball in the dirt. So interesting that Pujols will stand and watch. Even though he's the only player left, Tony La Russa telling us he would not hesitate to use Pujols at second wherever. And Orlando Hudson, the all-star from the Diamondbacks, will have a chance to tie it or win it. The lead runner, Hardy, with good speed at second. Derek Lee, for a big man, can run at first. National League has not won the All-Star game since 1996.
a cut fastball inside off the plate. So now Hudson has a free swing. He's going to throw the fastball here. Even though Rodriguez a, a pitcher who will throw breaking balls behind in the count. I don't think here though. And it's 3 and 0. Second all-star at bat for Orlando Hudson. He hasn't seen a strike. And Rodriguez is one pitch out of the strike zone away from loading the bases for Aaron Rowan. Got a take on 3 and 0. He does strike one. Rowan waiting on deck. The bases are loaded. Three consecutive walks. All the base runners, both runs here in the ninth inning. Coming after two were out and nobody on. Rodriguez cannot find the strike zone. Very distraught. It's easy to understand why, but it certainly looks like a guy who's a bundle of energy out of the mound is overthrowing here in the bottom of the ninth inning on a chilly night in San Francisco. And he's thrown one devastating breaking ball since coming in. And that was to Derek Lee, but everything's been pulled down into the dirt. Here is Aaron Rowan, who could be the hero for the National League. Strike one. Bases loaded, two out, 0 oh, 1 the count. Into right field, should end the night. Rios is there, and the American League has won 10 straight. Beating the National League 5 4 here in San Francisco. A thrilling ninth inning at the end of a well played game. One error. The National League leaving nine runners on in this game and falling a run short. So the home field advantage will reside in the American League yet again and the National League's streak of futility that has started and run on since 1997 continues. A win for the American League 5-4. We'll take a break, come back, and have our post-game show here at AT&T Park. Rodriguez made it interesting, but he gets the save and relief for Brian Roberts. Final score, 5-4 AL. Back in a moment. Greatest player in the history of Major League Baseball. The salute. To Willie Mays in the ceremonial first pitch in his trip around the ballpark. A 5-4 win for the AL in the 78th All-Star game. Back with more in a moment.